So, anyone has a question, raise your hands, and I might cut you short abruptly if you're taking too long. So, <laughs> um, let's just go around the room, starting over there. Thank you. I like, I, like your, I like your description of fiscal stimulus, socialism and fascism. But I want your opinion. I say we can go back 70 years and follow Keynesian economics the way he designed it. Stay in the black or balanced scoring, good times. And yeah, yeah. Would that be preferable than having a balanced budget all the way? Do you think the results today would be better if we did that or we just maintain a balanced budget all the way through that period, say, say except for World War II? Right, right. What I forgot to say was that during this 70 years, uh, in 1900, the United States was the most uh, productive nation. In other words, the output per person was, we were the most productive nation in the world, we were a creditor nation. And during the seven years of Keynesian economics, we've now become a debtor nation, right? So your question, balanced budgets all the way through? Yes, I mean, th th that's a value question of whether you should live within your means. You ask a Keynesian economist, does your family have debt? No, we don't have debt. But yet, they're okay with the government having debt. And what is the government but, but people also? So that's a disconnect. That's a Jean-Luc Rousseau, you know, com common good, common will, common good disconnect, the fallacy of aggregation. So I'm a fiscal conservative, and I believe that you should live within your means, and, and that it's that it's ethically wrong to pass debt to your children unless you get something for that debt. And we right now uh, the deficit in the United States is eight percent projected in 2009, eight percent of GDP, which is twice that allowed if you wanted to join the European Union, right? So we wouldn't even be allowed in the European Union. And we're growing at the same rate as the European Union countries. So that debt hasn't bought us anything. Right? Debt is fine if it buys you something, but it hasn't bought us anything. Um, actually, I've been following the news in the last week or so. I've been so busy with other things. But it seems that Obama is talking about a, a big a, a spending spree now and, and, and more money. Uh, have you seen a spending $750 million. Billion. 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 There, there's industrial policy, which is the government picking and choosing winners, and it's all based on, you know, payback. You gave me money for my election, so now I'm going to, to skew spending towards you or, or regulation towards you. There, there, uh, what happens during the, the banking bailouts now is basically the Fed is printing money, right? It's paid for either by appropriation or by printing money. So what happens is, our value of our dollar is going down by some percentage of the bailout. So we don't get it back. We're going to get, some people are going to get roads built, or nicer roads, or there's going to be bridges, or, you know, we're all going to, the schools are going to get, the, you know, newfangled light bulbs or whatever. But I don't know if, it, if 70 years has shown that we don't get anything back. Uh, I mean, but what's what's the the, the counterfactual? Uh, David, um, you said in your talk that uh, the first countries to leave the gold standard, like France or whatever, were the first mm -hmm. ones to bounce back from the yeah. depression. Yeah. So does that imply then that the gold standard is actually not a good thing? That it's inflationary would keep us mired in a recession or a depression? I said gold standard. Gold standard. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> Gold's okay. Uh, the market the, is people trading with each other. Okay. There's and special. Adam Smith said specialization of labor and the market is what causes prosperity. Right. So you, you trade with each other. Now, same thing with countries trading with each other. David Ricardo called that comparative advantage, but it's really just specialization of labor between countries. Right. Now you put a fixed exchange. You put a fixed uh, exchange rate that prevents uh, 
exchange and that prevents pr prosperity creation. It depends how the gold standard is done. With, with central banks managing everything, the central banks would be managing the exchange rate based on gold, which is then a fixed currency. So it's not a good idea the way it is now under central banking. It would be under free banking, but then it would just competition would determine how uh, people would choose which money they wanted to use, whether or not it was based on gold or not. Two more questions. Uh, you have uh, based on what you were saying about the social contract, do you yeah, think it would be better contract. if uh, the United States was split up into three to five smaller republics? Yeah, yeah Montesquieu said that, right. Is, um, is, uh, the United States was supposed to be small, right? Do I think it would be... Yes. Uh, being of Scottish background, I'd like to see Scotland have their own country to begin with. But... Um, Yes. Africa has the same problem. <laughs> Pakistan, India, these countries are way too big. California is too big. It should be split up. Uh, assuming, for argument's sake, <clears throat> that Keynesian economics was good for the Depression, which I, I know you don't, uh, would it be, a, even if it was a good thing then, would it be a disaster now for the simple reason that we owe how many billions in debt to the Central Bank of China, the Central Bank of Korea, all of these various oil, Arab oil sheiks who we suspect are also financing Al-Qaeda. Is, is that a big difference between this depression and the depression in the 20s? And even if it did work then, would it not work now for this reason? Oh, the Keynesian economics not working now. I'm saying even if it you, did work then, would it not work now because Right. How much? How, how heavily were? How heavily were we in debt to foreign governments during the twenties? Actually, we Is were super difference? lenders then. We, huh? we 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 lent a lot then. And ah. now we borrow a lot. Now we're borrowing a lot. Yes. So I mean, my argument, even Good if it point. didn't work, even if it worked then, it couldn't work now for that reason. Um, and your other point I'd like to follow up on, too, is that, yes, the dollar was the reserve currency in all the central banks everywhere, but now over the last year, the euro is competing. The euro and the dollar value, depending on exchange rate on a given day, are the same. So in other words, there's as many euros out there as there is dollars. China's central bank is now starting to hold euros. So this is just, you know, 70 years of Keynesian economics is payback time as the dollar starts to sink down. Okay. I have yeah, three minutes. Me. One more question. Yeah. Go ahead. You can wait. I'll make it too quick. The, uh, you described the common understanding of monetary policy around the Great Depression as a misdiagnosis. Yeah. How much of that do you think is genuinely a misdiagnosis and a mistake that people made honestly versus, because uh, I mean, my, I believe that, that the propagation of Keynesian economics in the first place is not done by people who honestly believe in it, but by people who have the money to propagate the idea and stand to benefit from it. So similarly, how much of that diagnosis do you believe was an honest misdiagnosis, and how much was the result of propaganda trying to establish those ideas? Yeah, it wasn't until Milton Friedman's Monetary History of the United States in 1960, right, I think? Uh, yeah, that, that Friedman showed that it was a monetary phenomenon, the Great Depression. So people didn't know that until Milton Friedman in 1960. And, and a, a lot of historians, even knowing that, wrote books about the Great Depression without incorporating Friedman's findings. So yes, e history, like economics, is a value-laden uh, enterprise. Thank you.